He who has an ear, part one. In 96 AD, Jesus came to give a message to John on the seven churches, which it's not about seven locations, although there are seven locations, but rather on the progression of the church age, for he knows the end from the beginning. So he's talking about the entire age, the progression of the church. And all seven churches at the end of his letter, he says how I titled this video, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. This means one body, one church, one bride, right? Not a harem. Or what do we have today in the church? We have a harem. There's so many religions, we can't name them. There's so many different books they read out. That's not the body of the church. The church is about one book, the Bible, and that's that. It's the, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit found in the living word of God. It's not this harem we got going on today. That, Jesus doesn't have a harem, guys. He has one bridal body. And I'm making this video because if you don't understand this, these seven letters that Jesus himself is dictating to John, if you don't understand what he's saying, the church is going to be your downfall. I'm not picking on churches. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. All right. So let's really break this down today. This harem, this pyramid scheme that is in the church today, that is a creation of Satan. And Jesus tells you that in the seven letters. Read Revelation 2 and 3. It's, it's an easy read. It's short and it's right there. Jesus comes back in the seven letters. He rebukes five of the churches. He does not rebuke, but also does not praise one of the churches. And only one out of seven, one out of seven, guys, does Jesus praise that church. Now that church has come and gone, and it was here for a very small time, and I'll talk about it when we get there. But there is a reason for these letters that no one really understands, because in the end, the church is going to be your fall out of grace. Not only just your fall out of grace, but an eternity in suffering and hot at that. So let's really understand what Jesus is telling us about the first church in Ephesus. First of all, we need to, we need to understand all of this in Greek. Okay, Ephesus is a Greek word and it means desirable. So it was the fall of that church that remained desirable to the people, right? They, they like what that church became, what, and it became what Jesus hates. It became run by the Nicolaitans, which Jesus again says himself. Go read it right there, Revelation 2. So Nicolaitans, as we read in Revelation 2, um, Two, two, six. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Again, Nicolaitans is a Greek word. And you break it down, and it means to conquer the common people. This is the works of Satan. They all started to turn back to the idol of Diana. So Nicolaitans, it is to... Well, I'll get, I'll, I'll break it down here in a little bit, but let's just move on here. So what's interesting about this is Jesus literally says, I will remove the lampstand and the progression of the church is destroyed as a one body worship of the gospel only and not the division. This is this at the end of this age, we start coming into vision. I'll talk about that in the next letter. But if not, I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of this place unless you repent. Revelation 2, 5. So the churches in Revelation 2 and 3 are not only churches in prophecy, but also churches that were actually in seven locations that Paul went to. Remarkably, history tells us that for more than a thousand years, there has been no church in Ephesus. The lampstand literally was removed. 
Even her outer, outer, outward appearance has been removed. Now, there are churches around uh, in Corinth and Rome and so forth, but none in Ephesus because she did not repent. The lamp, stand, the lamp stand was literally removed. But this you have, that you hate the work of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So again, since Revelation is a book of prophecy, we must look into the meaning of the word Nicolate in Greek is composed of two words. Nikeo means conqueror or above others. Laos means common people, secular people, or laity. So Nicolate means conquering the common people, climbing above the laity. You know how much the devil loves that. Um, climbing above the laity. Nicolaitans then refers to a group of people who esteem themselves higher than the common believers. All right, just think back when Jesus was walking here and how much he was calling the, these people are what we call the Pharisees and the Sadducees, how they wear their beautiful clothing and their big hats on their heads. They, they set themselves apart as to be better than. And Jesus was constantly, what did, what did he say to them? You brood of vipers. That's what he said to them. He understood this in a way that we are not taught because we're churched down and schooled away from our history and really our Bible. And so this is what this means. So this just started from the get-go. Um, so these people like to set themselves, they, that's still the way. Power, 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 greed, 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 money, money, money. It's all this stuff is about. The Lord is the only one above the common believers or below the Lord. That's it. There's no, there's no hierarchy. There's no pyramid scheme. We're going to get into that. The Nicolaitans are below the Lord, yet above the common believers. Watch the chosen and see how, how that their attitude was. That's a good, the chosen is a good portrayal of the days that Jesus is walking on earth. For me, it was. It's the best one I've seen so far. The Lord hates the behavior of the Nicolaitans, the conduct of climbing over and above the common believers. It's known in the church system, if you will, as a mediatorial class. Again, I'm going to call it a pyramid scheme because that's what it is. It's Satan's pyramid scheme. It's what the Lord detests. It is something to be hated. But at that time, there was only that behavior, all right? It, it, the, the, the gospel had not become a teaching. The Nicolaitans stepped in and took over. They saw a system of power and greed. They saw a grab. And they actually just turned the people back around to worshiping Diana anyway. So in the New Testament, there's a fundamental principle. All of the children of God are priests of God. In Exodus 19, 5 through 6, God called unto the people of Israel, saying, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God ordained in the beginning that the whole nation be priest, and the incident of worshiping the golden calf occurred not long after Moses broke the tablets of law and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come up unto me and slay every man his brother. At that time, the Levites came to stand on the Lord's side. And as a result, 3,000 Israelites were slain on that day. Only the Levites could be priests. And so there, that, that's what started the kingdom of priests to become a tribe of priests. The rest of the people of Israel could not be priests. And they had to depend on the Levites to be priests on their behalf. The priestly class in the Old Testament was a meditorial class. I'm not going to say that word anymore, okay? Meditorial. I'm just going to call it a pyramid class. Now, this video is going to have many parts to it, so hopefully you're watching them all. However, in the New Testament, Peter said, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people acquired for a possession. 1 Peter 2, 9. We, the whole church, are priests. 
This goes back to the condition in the beginning, Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Said that as many as washed in the blood are priests. The priests are in charge of God's business. Every believer is in charge of God's business. There should not be a pyramidal class in the church. The church has only one priest, and that's Lord Jesus. Period. Okay, period. I know we've all been churched. Okay, it's been going on for over 2,000 years. I get it. It's in the collective psyche. Let's let it go. Let's let it go and bring back the Church of Philadelphia we're going to talk about later on what the church is really supposed to be. Before a change took place in the church, all the believers took care of the Lord's business. But after the apostles, this condition began to change. Men began to lose interest in the matter of serving the Lord. So when the Roman Catholic Church began in the time of Pergamos, there were a few who were saved, but many were baptized. So unbelievers filled the church. Then there appeared a group of clergy. Since there were members who were not spiritual, what could they do? Asking them to put down the account books and pick up the Bible to preach was not a good idea, right? So a group of people was sought out to take care of spiritual affairs while the rest did secular work. So this term clergy was produced against God's desire. It served Satan really well. And it will serve him even better in the final days. God, listen, what does God desire? God desires that all who do secular work should also take care of their own spiritual affairs. Isn't this, isn't this common sense? If you get away from being churched and schooled, of course God wants you to have a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship with him. Of course God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Of course God doesn't want you going one hour or two hours on a Sunday once a week and get your oil filled that way. Your lamp, I should say, your lamp filled that way. Come on. You know how much Jesus loves us. Do you think he, he likes this pyramid scheme going on? The Lord is pleased with those who reject the pyramid class. The, again, the church has been schooled. They call it the me mediatorial class. Listen, if you've been washed by the blood, you have a direct share in spiritual affairs. The church can only be founded on this ground. Otherwise, it's Judaism. It's Christianity. Therefore, we are not just fighting the matter of the different sects, you know, sections, these, these classes, these systems, whatever. We're fighting for the privilege of the blood. Today, there are three main categories of churches in the world. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this. I had to go research that. That wasn't fun for me. You guys know me. I did not enjoy my time about 10 hours one day to have to go looking down all these classes and what they were about. But I did it to, well, I did it because no one else is doing it. <laughs> it's just that, that, that simple Holy Spirit said, this is your job today. So I do what the Spirit tells me. All right, what's the three classes? You've got the Catholic system, which I, I can't understand that system. Obviously, they don't read a Bible. I, I just, I don't get it. We'll get there. You got the Catholic system, and then you've had the state church, which is the Anglican church, and then you have the Lutheran Church, which is the independent churches, like the Methodist and the Presbyterian, etc. I'm not going to go through all of that. So the Catholics, as you guys know, has a priestly system. The Ang Anglican Church is a clerical system. And the independent churches is a pastoral system. All right? All pyramid. That's just what it is. It's a pyramidal scheme class which undertakes spiritual affairs they undertake the spiritual affairs but the church god wants to establish is one in which he can place the whole gospel without the pyramid scheme if there is anything present that does not conform right to the whole gospel that is not the church he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches all seven letters in that way why because it's one body one body. We, we can't come at you through the Catholic way or the Protestant way or the Lutheran way or the whatever way. Okay, it's not a harem. 
Let's, let's understand that. One ear, one body, one gospel, one message, and it's the living word. That's that. You know there's over 4,000 different translations of the Bible out there. Now, I read stuff pulled out of the Bibles, of course, but I still stick almost 90% of my time to the King James Bible. So, when the Lord, the Lord speaks the same way to all seven churches, showing that not only the church at Ephesus, which is where we still are, we're here in the first church, should hear, but all the churches must hear. To him who overcomes, to him I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. God's original intention for man was that he eat of the fruit of the tree of life. Now, God says that we can come directly to him and do according to his original intention. The question is not what the tree of life is. Rather, the question is, are we willing to follow God's initial intention to eat of the fruit of the tree of life in the garden of God? Only the overcomers can eat. Whoever returns the original intention and demand of God is an overcomer. All right, so next is going to be the church the second letter, church in Smyrna. That's going to be part two. And all God's people said, amen.